this quiet little church in the middle of Plymouth is St Budal Church it's not the original church the original St Budal Church was down on Ernestettle Creek this one was built in the 1560s you wouldn't think to look at it today that blood was spilt here in the English Civil War twice men fought and died around this little church causing damage to the church and the wall around it what exactly it's, happened here then Phil right this St Bruno church was one of the royalist outposts they had they didn't have enough manpower to m build a line north of Plymouth only on two occasions when the large armies came uh, to Plymouth under Prince Morris and King Charles I these put this place St Bruno church Crown Hill known as Knackers Knoll then and Wydy Court were royalist outposts these were strong points that the royalists could use to dominate the area the royalists would go out round up food cattle and they'd insult the parliamentarians who supported the, the um, parliament because um, these were the king's men and they believed anyone who defied the king was a traitor but in 1644 an event happened here Colonel Martin Robert Martin from Plymouth who was in command of the garrison since the death of Colonel William Gould who died in March 1644 after beating Prince Morris when the Royalists left Plymouth was open the Royalists had detachments on the other side of the Plym the other side of the Tamar and north of Plymouth so that the defenses were quite open so Robert Martin decided he was a very aggressive commander he decided to lead a raid out here with 500 infantry and a hundred horse so he marched out of Plymouth in May 1644 early morning through Ham he came via Ham and Kings Tamerton over on the right now along the way he'd sent detachments to watch out for royalist uh, incursions against him at Plimpton and Wydie and Knackers Knoll so he had to send detachments out to watch for that so because through Swilly, Swilly what is today Swilly Ham the old Ham, Ham estate uh, Ham Kings Tamerton Ham House was actually Robert Trelawney's house a royalist house and it was plundered during the Civil War by the Roundheads and of course the dip at Western Mill and the hill up to Kings Tamerton would have been just the same yeah thing. very steep and this these troops started to march along in the dark they left before dawn and on on the way the horse got lost Colonel Martin's horse went off somewhere took the wrong road and was detached and they weren't involved in this fight now their first attack the Roundheads came up Oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> and, la and launched their attack against the church from this direction the south it was over in minutes it, it didn't last long the first attack and the royalists were able to take the church the roundhead surround the royalists surrendered they were mostly recruits the few officers that were with the, the unit fled on their horses north um, the man they managed to round up the few prisoners barrels of powder and then ride back march back to Plymouth that was the end of the first battle now after this King Charles came to the West Country with an army he marched into Cornwall beat the Earl of Essex captured 10,000 men and moved on Plymouth after a short siege he moved away and then towards the end of the year the war was going badly for the King so the enthusiasm for the King's cause waned everywhere soldiers from Plymouth on both sides were taken away to reinforce other armies because the roundhead forces the, round, the royalist forces around Plymouth were just being dissipated for use against to kind of take on Oliver Cromwell and the Earl of um, Lord Fairfax's army marching into the West Country the new model army so the road was open again and in December 1645 1645 Colonel John Crocker led another detachment out of Plymouth to attack St Budal Church. Which way did they come? This, they, this time they came along what is today Wolseley Road and moved up to a, a small outwork at Barn Barton, what is today Barn Barton. So we drove this morning along their footprints? Yes, that's the road that's the they would have taken, yeah. They crossed Kinterbury Creek and attacked a fort there called Kinterbury Work. They moved so quick, the cavalry charged the fort and the Royalists surrendered they took 17 prisoners and barrels of powder muskets they were, they'd lost their will to fight the Royalists at this time of the war most of them it was very hard to recruit veteran soldiers anymore they couldn't find them so they were just getting normal troops 
militia men and putting them in a fort and giving them a musket. But here, they put up a more determined defence. Here, there were 200 royalists under a man called um, John Grenville, who was a nephew of Sir Richard Grenville and the son of Beville Grenville, who was killed earlier in the Civil War. They barricaded themselves in the church with a man up in the tower. And the royalists, the roundheads, came from Kinterbury to work. They marched up to St. Budo, came from the southwest and formed a line just to the this side of the church, if you like. You can feel it. Can't see any of it now, it's all been built up. They formed a line there and attacked the church. This fight was more determined. The roundheads, the royalists put up a good defence, lasted an hour. They was fighting in the church. They caused a lot of damage to the actual structure of the church with their muskets. They said there was a report that there were cannons, but I saw no evidence for any cannons in this area. There's nothing in the reports and in the list of prisoners and captures, there was no cannons mentioned. Was and they fighting actually inside? The yeah, they broke into the church, but it didn't last long. Once they broke in, there was a soldier up in the tower, an ensign who was shot, so they shot him dead. And then they broke into the tower, into the church itself. After over 60 minutes of fighting, the church was breached. And it would be this entrance here? Yes, not this door. Not this door. They broke into the end door. Entrance, yep. so, so this stonework here. That's original. Is original. Yeah, that's an original so entrance way. We are standing basically where they had a battering ram possibly to get through that door. <laughs> they just kicked the hell out of the kicked door. The door in, did they? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And shot think, off the locks. It? Where yeah. we're standing, yeah. if we could go back in time, there's a massive armed struggle just here to get in there. Yeah, 400 men fighting each other to get in. They got in, they destroyed a lot of the, church, the fabric of the church in those days, and it took years to repair the church. When I came here years ago, you could actually see the remnants of musket fire on these walls, some damage, but I think it's all been repaired it's now been and repaired, it's weathered it. in and you can't see it. But prisoners were taken along with muskets and powder, and then the Royalists, the Roundheads, marched back leisurely to Plymouth. And some of the prisoners are actually changed sides. They joined the Roy Roundhead Garrison, they saw the war was lost. So rather than be on the losing side, they joined the Roundhead Garrison. Um, those who didn't were put in Plymouth Old Castle. That was used as a prison during the Civil War. Um, it's not much left of that place now, unfortunately. So Phil, yes. what's under our feet here? Uh -huh. Apart from the very obvious, because that's where we are. The bodies were buried close by. They could have been buried in the churchyard, but I've got, seen no record of it. Um, musket balls, cannonballs again. So today we call this a graveyard. Yes. But in the Civil War, it was a battlefield. battlefield. Yeah. A scene of desecration. Desecration. Because this happened all over in the Civil War. The Roundheads would desecrate the Royalist churches and the Royalists would desecrate the Parliamentarian churches. They'd take plate, take whatever they could and just leave it. There was no sort of humanitarianism in this dude. It's an unbelievable story of such a peaceful place. Yeah, you it? wouldn't think it. Two battles were fought here in the Civil War. Although they weren't major battles as other battles are considered. They were, they were quite tough little fights, desperate struggles, men fighting for their lives. There was a captain, um, a major called Major Haynes, who was one of the garrison's better soldiers. And he's been through, he fought in the Civil War through Plymouth, throughout Plymouth, throughout the Civil War in Plymouth. And he was buried in St Andrews after, after this fight because he was killed here. And his funeral must have been quite, a, a, quite an event because it cost £38. And that doesn't seem much these days, but in those days, a funeral costing £38 was a good day out. So after the incident here, the church was just left wrecked? It was in a bad way. There was no vicar here because when the Royalists took over, he left. Like a lot of priests, they came, they came, went to the nearest town. Plymouth was inundated with priests and clergymen. So it's just um, a sign of the times. And it's sad that there's nothing else, nothing left of it really to see. Only a, the odd plaque here and there. If There's these, no memorial to the dead soldiers. If these walls could speak. Yeah. <laughs> because it's amazing to think of just what happened here. Yeah. And of course, it is. Phil, if we just come up here. There's the plaque there on the wall. And uh, we go this way.
going around this way. Oh, look, a Civil War car. <laughs> we can't help but think just what might be below the earth here. Mus musket balls have earth. been found here. Mus musket balls have been found here. Because just how many people who plant their tomatoes in kidney beans here have any inkling they're on a battlefield? Yeah, nobody does. Most people don't know about it, which is a shame. It should be known. Oh, absolutely. We should celebrate the Civil War. Absolutely. So yeah. the battle would have easily extended down to the allotments. Yeah, would they would have, have come up always. They would, they would have surround the place. As far as um, the other side of the roundabout going up. No, the they would have start came come from that not from that direction so much. The first battle they would have come from that direction from King's Tamerton, but the second one would have come from this way down this lane. Oops. Up here. Yes. Come from this direction, south and southwest of the church. Mm. Well, Phil, all I can say, another extraordinary bit of history. Uh, yes. One thing I would like to say, Phil, is I've had great pleasure reading your book. Oh, thank you. And uh, most history books don't bring it alive. No. But, and I've read a lot. I would say that your book brings it alive to Plymouth. Thank you. Because it brings it down to individuals, but places yeah. where we all know today. And, it's uh, difficult. It's difficult to comprehend that all the places we've got now, um, all the places that are around now, something happened in the Civil War, in nearly every place that exists. In when Plymouth. did you write this book, Phil? Twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, I started, and it's so much information to find and gather. But there's a lot more in this book that tells you more and more about what I'm talking about now. Oh, I know. It's I mean, the fighting. It's, it gives you names, dates, people. It's and that's what history is about. On the yeah. Civil War in Plymouth, thank in the you. West of England. Yeah. There's nothing like it. No, oh, thank and you. And I've had hours of pleasure reading that book. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time today. That's sir. all right.